you, Tiffany, and thank you so much. Very intense start here. We have the all-new Triple Dare Challenge. <laughs> What's up, guys? Boy, Benny, I don't often start talking about a story by thanking my mother and father, okay? It's really not typically relevant to anything that we're talking about here. But thanks, mom and dad. You didn't buy basic cable. We just had, like, uh, access TV, public access TV, right? PBS, ABC, NBC, and CBS. <laughs> and we weren't allowed to watch really that either. And so thanks for not hooking me up to the Nickelodeon uh, Predator box that we... Now, no, the cesspool at Nickelodeon was Nickelodeon infiltrated by multiple predators. Records revealed channel employed five convicted child molesters and two other accused pedophiles to work on sets with kids. Wow. Legal records reviewed by the Daily Mail show Nickelodeon employed employed more accused and convicted pedophiles than previously disclosed. Uh, the, the number should generally be zero for a kid's network for the number of pedophiles they employ. Molesters include Nickelodeon productions, assistants, and talent managers who had sexual contact with the younger kids. Convicted pedophiles still get hired in Hollywood today, child safety advocate told the Daily Mail. Sex offenders work with children at Nickelodeon. You just don't hate Hollywood enough, ladies and gentlemen. This is obviously an ongoing saga that has been played out uh, on a shocking HBO documentary called Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, uh, where one of the childhood stars on Nickelodeon, a guy named Drake Bell, is talking about the number of times that he was obviously sexually assaulted, raped, molested. I mean, it's awful. It was sick stuff. And how Nickelodeon just didn't really care, actually. Didn't do nothing about it. Even when, even when the guy was arrested, Nickelodeon did nothing about it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as people are sort of creeping through some of the creepier things that have happened on Nickelodeon, given the current news cycle of another big-time Hollywood celebrity, entertainment industry celebrity, uh, some of the, well, old Nickelodeon skits have uh, a very different meaning now, like the ones with um, Diddy. All these jokes that you're speaking of, um, that the show covered over the past two nights. Every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny mm. and only funny. Tell you what, take this toy helicopter, <laughs> put it down his pants. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. What? Okay, so this is a skit where they pour a bunch of white fluid on a kid while he's sleeping and then shove stuff down his pants. Let's see how it goes. Remember, this is written for a child audience, not an adult audience. Mustin. Didn't work. He's still asleep. Try this. Shall I? By all means. Got it. Okay. Got it. It's for kids. It's for kids. I'm not going to sit here and try and say that everything should be seen through some type of perverted lens. But I got to tell you, man, just like the image of that couch on uh, Nickelodeon, it just it makes your skin crawl, right? Make your skin crawl. People have been looking through old, I mean, that clip's like 20 years old. So people have been looking through old clips and sort of like finding all these uh, weird little nuggets of really dark stuff that these obvious predators were doing at Nickelodeon, right? So th th these people are all being exposed. You know, these pe they, they hired all of these child predators to go work with these, these little kids. I mean, they're monsters. I mean, they were found guilty in court. I mean, they, they have all the, all the records. I mean, it's not, we're, not, we're not trying to, like, throw slime here, for lack of a better term. These people are literal child molesters that were hired to work at Nickelodeon. And so as people go and kind of, like, piece through some of the old stuff in Nickelodeon, um, this has come up. That the Nickelodeon logo 
looks looks like almost exactly like the Epstein Island shape. Well, I mean, maybe a little out there, but like, is it actually? I mean, symbolism for these kind of mon th these monsters like live on symbolism. And is it really that out there? So let's begin here by saying Snopes says it's not true. Is Nickelodeon latest logo the same shape as Jeffrey Epstein's island, Little St. James? Ever since Nickelodeon unveiled its new emblem design, social media has been abuzz with claims suggesting that it resembles Epstein Island. False. Why is it false? Oh, yeah, baby. We'll show you. We'll show you how it's false, okay? So one, we will just, you know, put the logo right over the island there and show you that it's literally the exact same shape as the island. I mean, it's like matches up perfectly. That will gear. That's that's not enough. We're Snopes, ladies and gentlemen. We we do more than just show that it looks exactly the same. Antonio Brown, of course, bringing this up and uh, sending this. We're going to come to the conclusion that there's no substantive basis to claim the outline of Nickelodeon's logo matches Epstein Island, even though it does, or there's any f meaningful connection between the two. Well, the meaningful connection is that Nickelodeon was filled with pedophiles and that Nickelodeon was filled with pedophiles. There's your meaningful connection, Snopes. I just did your job for you. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you the P.O. box to get me my check. This is what people are saying, of course, all across social media, right? They're like, they're like sort of laying, obviously, the logo over the map. I do the old uh, flip roo here. And then you can see it actually, actually quite nicely. Even the little, even the little dot kind of resembles like the little island out here, out in the middle of the uh, ocean. Antonio Brown uh, brought this up and the commentary has been quite interesting online. Antonio Brown really came out on Twitter and said that the Epstein Island looks exactly like the Nickelodeon logo. And now I literally can't unsee it. Like it even has that little dot in the top corner, like this little extra piece in the corner. And off initial reaction, my first thought was Antonio Brown is crazy, but not here. They actually do look alike. I'm not tripping, right? And for anyone living under a rock, Dan Snyder, a producer and screenwriter at Nickelodeon, was recently exposed for being a complete weirdo. And if you really think I'm kidding, just search up Ariana Grande Nickelodeon and some weird <laughs> will pop up for you. And supposedly this guy also had a foot fetish and he thought no one would notice. Like, hello, maybe that explains this. I just love that out of all people, AB is trying to stir the pot. Like, that's just hilarious to me. The only thing we're really missing from this is the actual list of guests that have visited Epstein Island. Well, lucky for you, Wired just came to perfect timing here, guys. Wired just came out with a list of people who visited Epstein Island. You'll be shocked to know that uh, Bill Clinton was on there. Oh, no, you wouldn't be shocked to know because we've known that for a very long time. But Wired is here saying that the, the Epstein Island visitors exposed by a data broker. Tough day for Snopes. Got to tell you, tough day for Snopes. Maybe Wired could do a study on the Nickelodeon logo and see. But according to this article, uh, the top line here is that 200 mobile devices of people who visited Epstein Island's notorious pedophile island in the years prior to his death left an invisible trail of data pointing back to his, their homes and offices. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO. Maps of these visitations generated by a troubled internal data broker with defense industry ties discovered last week by Wired document the numerous trips of wealthy and influential individuals to the seemingly undeterred by Epstein's status as a convicted sex offender. The data was amassed, uh, and it showed the complicated route that these people take to visit Little St. James. Shows where they're from. We'll just kind of skip here through the article. I encourage you to read this article at Wired. It showed how they got to the island. Some of them flew. Many of them, um, the island had a helipad. Many of them took boats. This is the path of the boats to the island. All right, there's the actual island. Look at where they're all going. Oh, wow. That's such a, such a great fun time for them. These monsters. Sick, sick freaks. A lot of people from the East Coast. This is where the cell phones were returned to people in Florida. Obviously, we knew that Jeffrey Epstein was convicted in Palm Beach uh, of being a sex predator and a child predator. And then he was just let off by the feds. Just hey, can you have to have a good time. So walk free. Didn't get locked up. Didn't have to wear an ankle monitor. A lot of people from obviously Upper East Coast here, the banking and financial corridors and po uh, political corridors. Look at this. Look at all the pings around Washington, D.C. It's Washington, D.C. right there. That little, that little nub. That's D.C. That's crazy. Yeah. 
Oh man, Snopes heart. <laughs> Snopes heart is hit. There's no connection between the two. Uh, well, I mean, uh, it seems like a connection. This is the Antonio Brown tweet. Obviously, uh, kind of went, kind of went crazy. And uh, I knew Nickelodeon was weird. Talk about Nick at night. Oof. Yeah, people are saying it's not a coincidence that a lot of these people, um, well, the fact checkers are putting their articles out. And the fact that the fact checkers are putting their articles out means they don't want us to talk about it. Can't see it. Once you un once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Same odd characteristics, right? Epstein Island Nickelodeon logo look exactly the same. So this is sort of the mashup here. This is what it used to be, right? I don't think this is an don't think this is an island. But um yeah. Looks like they're changing it up. So maybe we'll find out more. Ladies and gentlemen, but yeah, there's the connection. Sorry, fact checkers, hardest hit. There, I mean, there is a connection. The connection is uh, the connection is this that Nickelodeon employed a ton of pederasts, pedophiles, and predators, and well, Jeffrey Epstein was one of those things, and 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 did those things on his on his horrible island. I mean, do you argue that? And that the shapes look a lot alike. So instead of saying false, you should just say like. I don't know, unproven, and maybe we'll do some reporting. We'll start asking, right? Yeah, don't ask too many questions. You never know who you'll find. Bill Clinton flew on sex offenders yet way more than previously known. Hmm, very curious. What's happened to these poor Nickelodeon stars? Oh, man, it's been hard to watch, right? Yeah, this is some of the horrors that Nickelodeon has wrought. No child, no. I don't care what you think of any of these people or any of these child actors. Nobody deserves this. No one deserves this. It's monsters. Put them all in jail. The internet has erupted in the wake of the ID docuseries Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. And one notable absence was that of Nickelodeon's golden child, Amanda Bynes. Among other things, the doc focused on Schneider's first big hit, The Amanda Show, and the questionable relationship the adult producer had with its star, who was just 13 when she got her own spinoff following her success on All That. The reason behind Biden's absence on Quiet On Set hasn't been officially confirmed, but there are plenty who are eager to hear her side of the story. So what happened to the early 2000s It Girl and where is she now? Biden's had an early knack for comedy and was scouted by a Nickelodeon producer at the Laugh Factory. Maybe I should have skipped that 13th candy bar. <laughs> she was cast on All That soon after. Later, her own show became a huge success, as did she. After The Amanda Show ended, Biden's would go on to star in early aughts hits like She's the Man, Big Fat Liar, and what a girl wants. In 2003, Variety reported that Bynes had been looking to get emancipated from her parents. Schneider himself, who was considered a major player in the then 17-year-old actor's attempt, discussed the emancipation while responding to Quiet On Set. She wanted that for herself, so she turned to her team, which included her lawyer, her agent, her manager, her publicist, me, because she included me as part of her team, thought of me that way. Bynes later told Paper Magazine that She's the Man sent her into a depression as she hated the way she looked in the film. She also said her role in Easy A, the last film she appeared in, gave her confidence issues as well. It was around this time that Bynes started struggling with drugs. She said that she started smoking weed at 16 and abused other substances like Adderall. Her body image issues continued during the filming of the movie Hall Pass when she claims a drug-induced psychosis made it so that she couldn't look at her body. Bynes was later replaced by Alexander Daddario. In 2010, she announced her retirement from acting via Twitter. What followed was a few years of erratic tweets, arrests, and a conservatorship by her parents that ended in 2022. While under her conservatorship, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. In the 2018 Paper Magazine interview, Bynes celebrated being four years sober and credited her relationship with her parents as helping her get there. Bynes was attending, and later graduated from, Los Angeles's Fashion Institute of Design and Merch merchandising and was eager to start her own fashion line. She was also clear about her desire to return to acting. I do miss acting and I actually have something surprising to tell you. I'm oh. going to start acting again. In the last few years, Bynes has sporadically posted on social media, debuting a face tattoo in 2019 and announcing a short-lived engagement in 2020. That same year, she also posted about being one year sober. Bynes was put on a psychiatric hold twice in 2023, once for reportedly walking around downtown Los Angeles without any clothing on. The second time she was referred for treatment. Bynes has yet to say anything about Quiet On Set, her relationship with Schneider, or anything related to her time at Nickelodeon. After a short-lived attempt at podcasting, it appears that the 37-year-old is exploring a future as a nail technician. I'm taking the board exam to get my manicure 
lessons this Tuesday. I really hope I pass the test this time.